Dan Rayfield here. How are you? What's up, Dan? I'm doing great, man. Like a champ. It's fight week. I'm excited. I hear you. I'm glad you're excited. Uh, what I wanted to start off with asking you, Tfimo, is uh, I know you're you obviously coming off the very big victory uh, in the unification against uh, Lomachenko, uh, but it's been like about a year since that fight, almost to you know, like within a couple of weeks. And I just wondered, could you just to characterize or express, explain any kind of disappointment for what really should have been incredible momentum after such a, a huge victory, and for reasons we don't have to like get into details, we all know you haven't had a chance to fight since then. What is your level of, you know, just irritation, frustration, and disappointment that you, you, you weren't able to really immediately capitalize on that incredible victory you had? Um, man, I should have just retired. You know, I think I should have <laughs> just thrown in the towel and just <laughs> try something different. Now, um, you know, for me, I, I'm very appreciative with everything. I mean, if, for you guys, it's been a year. For me, as fighters and stuff, man, it feels like, it feels like five, ten years for us, you know? So it's... um. You know, but everything happens the way it does. You know, I trust in the process. You know, I definitely would have loved to have fought more this year. You know, um, that's what the goal was to fight two to three times this year. But, you know, things happen. I got COVID. They postponed the fights numerous of times. Um, you know, just to be here now and it's fight week. We're here in New York already. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's already that time. I'm excited, you know, and um, I just look at it like this. You know, 2022 is going to be my best year. You know, 2021. Cool. We're already at the end of it, and I'm just looking forward to 2022. Was there frustration, though, given the, you know, not only because of, you know, it's one thing if it was an injury or, or something, you know, weird happened, but there was like a confluence of things. Like you said, you got COVID. There was the issue with uh, the pandemic in the first place. There was also the fact that what happened with the, the Triller and the constant rescheduling in the, in the, in the, in the legal case and all that. Can, it, was there frustration, and to what degree? Absolutely. Uh, all the way up. <laughs> I mean, um, how else can I be uh, more frustrated than someone that risks his life in the ring and puts all his um, pretty much his whole life in there uh, just for anyone just to dictate what the hell they want to do with my career and how they want to move it. It's very frustrating, you know, during that time, you know, and um, but I'm thankful, you know, I, I'm thankful for everything that has come my way. I'm, I was definitely frustrated because I didn't expect, I know boxing has a, a way with um, business, right? Um, it's so uh, crooked. The thing is just that once you're in it, it's a lot different to where I was just more surprised. Like, wow, it's, I, I, I used to hear the rumors and I used to hear this and I used to hear that. But once you get to that point where you're there, it's, um, it's uh, shocking, but it's also sad to, to say the least because boxing shouldn't be that way. You know, we as fighters, we're the ones that risk our lives in there. I shouldn't have anybody tell me how to, how should I move and, and what to do? I, I don't like, I don't like when people tell me take it or leave it. You know, usually I, then I just leave it. I got you. All right, TFMO. Good luck on Saturday, my man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, TFMO, uh, Keith Eidick, how's it going? Ah, I'm doing great, man. How you been? Oh, for well, everybody, nice. happy Thanksgiving to all of you guys. Yeah. You too, man. To you and your family as well. Um, are you in New York already or no? Yeah, yeah. I've been in New York since uh, the Crawford Porter fight. Okay. Um, Tia Fimo, if someone would have told you on, I don't know, in March, you're not going to fight George Cambosis until November and it's going to be on Matchroom and DAZN. <laughs> what would you have said back then if someone told you this was, was the way it would unfold? I would have moved up to 140. I would have just dropped all these belts. Uh, I, this is ridiculous. You know, it's crazy how you have a, a fighter, George Cambosis, who pulls, who pulled out of the fight from the Triller uh, event, and it still is my mandatory somehow, where I'm still fighting him to defend my IBF along with these other beautiful belts. So, it's um, I definitely would have just dropped these. I, at this point, I, I know that we've talked back and forth about it, um, but you know, uh, I'm just uh, I'm looking forward to just getting this fight over with and see what what the future holds for me. Do you feel ultimately that when he refused to come here for October 16th, that that was the last straw for Triller and that's why they walked away from this? Oh, yeah, I believe that for sure. I believe there was many other things to it. You know, I think that they were just looking forward to finding a way out. Who knows? Maybe they did something. You know, this is just an opinion for me. You know, this is, uh, how can I say, an, not an assumption, but um, I guess or a suggestion that I think that what they truly did was uh, they probably agreed to something, you know, on the side. Who knows? I don't know. So they could throw the fight away. 
But I just find it shocking that someone that's about to get the highest payday of their whole career, uh, the highest payday of any mandatory, which was $2 million, how are you going to ask for extra money on top of that? And then once we say we agree to it, you cancel the fight. You know, it's like, um, I don't get it, you know, but I'm thankful for matchroom boxing and for the zone, for Eddie Hearn and for everybody picking this fight up, man, and just uh, looking forward to what we do this Saturday. I got one follow-up before I let Chris take over here. So you feel that they want, one way or the other, they wanted out of it and just found a way out of it because they ultimately did not want to pay the money? Um, I want to say that, so to speak, but I do say that, um, yeah, it has to be. Uh, there's no other way around it, I'll be honest. There's no way other – there's none. I mean, there was no reason for them to extend it to this point. You know, there was no reason for them to postpone it the amount of times that they did. Um, they had other events going on during those times that we could have easily had open slots to make and make the fights happen. You know, and um, I think that they uh, uh, these are just things that I'm a, that that this is how I feel as a person and opinionated on it is that um, it's just that I felt like that was just um, <clears throat> trying to shelf me, you know, and they did that. You know, they shelved me because what I got COVID. You wanted me to fight during COVID. <laughs> I'm not going to fight during COVID. I got to think about everybody's health, you know, um, and, you know, I guess that's that's the that's the full of it, you know. But um, everything happens for its reasons. I learned how people are. You know, I learned how people treated my family during out there in Miami. So it kind of gave me a, a realization of um, how fake everybody can be in front of my face. So I just uh, take everything the way I do and um, just look forward to beating the hell out of George Cambosis on Saturday at the Hulu Theater, November 27th. Thanks, Steve Fimo. Thank you, Keith. Well, Steve Fimo, it's Chris Walker from The Zone News. Um, over in the UK, and um, thanks for taking the time to do this. Um, in regards to what Dan said earlier about how frustrated you've been this year, has that made you extra determined to secure bigger fights against big names around your weight class, considered in the last year of your career? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm someone that you know I didn't come here just to be the best pound for pound fighter during the time and just you know sit on it. <laughs> you know, I don't want to just sit on these belts. They haven't really been, you know, my, my belts are catching, you know, they're getting dust over here. They're getting dusty and stuff. And I, and they need um, they need to feel that energy again. They need to know how what it feels like, you know, along with me. So, you know, I'm looking forward to definitely fighting more times next year. You know, my contract is stated to fight three times next year. So, um, you know, we're just going to get this over with, you know, and, and at the same time, just uh, put on a show for the zone and match room. And to, to give them what they what they, they see in this, you know, the potential of Teofimo on the rise, on the on the cusp of becoming great. You know, they see a young, hungry fighter like George Cambosis who could repeat what I did against, you know, uh, Lomachenko. So, you know, I just think overall, man, um, you know, I, I can't I can't think about those things no more because it's in the past. And now we're six days away <laughs> from finally making it happen. And um, I'm negative on COVID tests, so. No excuses. You say you've got three fights in 2022. Um, if you could guarantee one opponent for one of them three fights, who would be the ideal fight? Uh, definitely Josh Taylor. I've been telling people about it, you know, for some time. You know, we could definitely make the fight happen in the UK. I look forward to doing something like that, especially it being my first fight in the UK. I'll, I'll be very appreciative of that, you know. Um, and uh, who else I can think of? I mean, I know they're talking about Javante Davis. That'd be a great fight. Could be at 140. And who else I can think of during these times? Um, I know that people have been talking about Devin Haney. See what happens there, you know. And that's about those are about three fights that you know that come to play. Yeah, T.O., thanks for that, and all the very best for Saturday. Okay. You got it. Thank you so much. Hey, T.O. Greg from the Athletic. How's it going? Yeah, hey, I'm doing great. How you been? Good, good, good. Um, thanks for taking the time. Um, this fight seems like it's kind of been building for years, basically, at this point. Obviously, it's been months, but it just feels like it's taken so long. Can you describe what this training has been like for you compared to other past fights? It's been a lot of work. I'll just say that, you know. <laughs> um, now, nine months, man. Nine months into this camp for one fighter. Uh, I could say, man, it's... Um, it's a blessing in disguise because I got to perfect more of my craft, things that I need to work on uh, defensively, offensively, and work on my arsenal better, you know, perfect my craft. 
Uh, I think that's the greatest thing that I could say from all this that has happened is that I've been in the gym nonstop to the point where I've learned a few more um, things that I could add to my arsenal, which have elevated my performance throughout sparring and, and so much more. So, you know, um, I'm honestly, uh, I got to say, even though it's been a heartbreaking year for me, it's been a, a great one. Now, well, um, I will say this, this year has been my, um, uh, I would say learning like life type of year, like a life learning year. Right. Um, and, and in terms of George, I saw a quote this week that said, you know, you have no respect for him. Is that more of him personally, or is that more about what he brings to the ring? No, it's personally. I don't respect that guy. I don't respect anybody that, that thinks that he's going to come in here and walk, walk all over it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to know your place. You know, I knew my place when I fought Loma. However, I'm going to carry it a certain way. You know what I'm saying? But not everybody's built like me. Not everyone's like me. So what can I say on that end? You know, um, I don't respect Campos at all. I think that, that he's someone that just thinks that his his thing don't stink. And, um, you know, he'll have to he'll have to find out the hard way come Saturday night. OK, and I guess just lastly, like what about his in-ring abilities? Um, does it does is there any particular part of his game that worries you? Uh, the only thing that worries me is that whether he's going to be in that ring Saturday night or not. So nothing else worries me. You know, um, every fighter has game plans. You know, they all come in there, but then everyone has a game plan so they get punched in the face, right? So it's like, um, we'll see what happens come Saturday night. You know, I don't have, we never go into a fight with game plans. We come, we go into a fight executing what we see at that moment, but we work on everything. So we're, pre we're prepared for Cambosis coming to us forward. We're prepared for Cambosis to try to box us. We're prepared for him to throw overhand rights and uppercuts. Uh, we're prepared for all the whole, the whole 10 you know, and, um, well, 12 rounds. So, but, um, I'm just looking forward to it. Yeah. I think it's going to be a quick night though. Awesome. I appreciate the time. Thanks. Thank you. Te afirmo, eh, en español, eh, hace poco estaba hablando con Cambosos y se notaba bastante frustrado por el tema también de esperar todo el tiempo que pasó. ¿Crees tú que esa frustración va a llevar a Cambosos a cometer errores? de tanto tiempo esperando y esperando y esperando que esa ansiedad sea beneficiosa para ti porque tú luces más calmado ah, puede ser sí ya, que, que porque yo sé que Cambos es un peleador que siempre está trabajando duro que, que él, él quiere ganar esta pelea y yo también so esto van a ser una buena pelea primera vez uh, que, que yo puedo decir es que que mira nueve meses entrenando para esta pelea con, con personas así Yo sé que Camboses um, cree que van a ganar esta pelea. Como todos, todos nosotros, todos nosotros necesitamos mentalmente así. Pero um, no, 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 no me, no me, para mí es que yo, yo conozco mi cuerpo, tú sabes. Y cuando mi cuerpo está um, como no finito, pero ya, ya está en ese, ese espacio de calmarse, eso es cuando yo necesito hacer mi, mis cosas diferentes. Um, pero la, la pelea con Camboses, ya yeah, yo estoy harto de esta persona y yo quiero, yo quiero, yo quiero buscar otras peleas grandes en mi división y en 140 también. Tú hablas de buscar eh, peleas grandes, te veo muy cercano, por ejemplo, al Canelo Álvarez. Canelo Álvarez es un disputed, tú eres un disputed. ¿Qué ejemplo te da Canelo para ti para, para, para boxear? Para mí es, um, es un persona que yo puedo decir que es como el hermano uh, grande para mí, como para el deporte, todos nosotros, todos los boxeadores. Uh, por Canelo es, es, un, es el rey de, de, de este deporte en estos momentos y yo tomando fotos con él y hablando con él y él como, como es, es muy uh, humilde en, en las cosas y para mí me gusta eso. Es como, como Sean Porter. Uh, en 2016, yo, la primera vez que yo hablo con Sean Porter, tan humilde ese, ese tipo, y lo mismo con Canelo, y me siento que eso es porque ellos tienen uh, la cara, uh, no, no Sean Porter, pero a Canelo tiene las cosas que él lo tiene, porque él lo conoce que la gente es la más importante en los boxeadores también. So, Oye, uh -huh. mucha suerte, muchas cosas buenas y, y que todo te vaya bien el 27, ¿ok? Sí, está bien. A ver, bien. Hey, Tiff, can you give us just a brief idea of what you were talking about with uh, Jorge? 
Uh, just pretty much, you know, like nine months of camp is just, um, you know, I'm just ready to get this over with. You know, I'm tired of uh, just uh, with this fighter, this one fighter, you know, it's been nine months and, you know, I understand my body, you know, I understand my body. And when it tells me to pretty much just calm down, you know, I just got to listen to it. So uh, it's all about just, um, you know, doing what's best and just make gain this fight over with so I can focus on the bigger fights that's coming up on the rise, you know, um, from my division to 140. And I just, heard, uh, oh, go ahead. And then, you know, told him about when he asked me about Canelo and um, and how do I feel about those things? I just, you know, I feel, if I should say, muy orgulloso de eso. And, you know, because it's truth, you know, I'm very proud and I'm very honored at the same time to be around uh, great champions like Canelo, especially the one that's in the, he's number one pound for pound, even after Crawford's uh, performance against Sean Porter. So I think that overall, it just shows where I stand in my, in my sport at the moment, but what I look forward to doing um, in the near future, God willing. Now, Tiafimo, I know we talked, we started off discussing just the frustration level of the year that's unfortunately sort of been wasted without having the fight after Loma. But when I look back, um, you know, you, you won the title, uh, the IBF title at the Garden against Richard Comey in 2019, December. You know, you had fought three times in 2018, far more in 17 when you were just starting to come up. But after the Comey fight, you know, it was another 10 months till you got the Loma fight. And then it was another, you know, it's been another, you know, year of 13 months to get to the point with the Cambosis fight. So reality is this will be, you know, your Loma fight was one fight in 23 months. And for a young fighter, particularly somebody on the rise like yourself, I mean, can you talk about just your, the, the, the shocking lack of inactivity? I know part of it was COVID related and we don't have to detail all the other stuff that went down, but one fight in 23 months got to really irritate you who wants to be in the ring, like, you know, multiple times. Absolutely. No, yeah, it's true. You know, I'm, I'm someone that loves to fight. I think a great, a great uh, year for me is three to four fights a year. You know, I was used to fighting like every month, <laughs> you know, I was, uh, you know, but this is different, I suppose. But just because I'm a world champion doesn't mean I should only fight once a year. You know, I'm not even at that point of making, making that to fight once a year. You know, I got to keep, I got to keep fighting. I got to keep making making my moves. And I think I just have to, at the same time, you know, it's frustrating to know that with so much that I have and so much that people are looking forward to seeing, you know, I have yet to even show that to them because of the situations that happened, you know, and that have occurred, you know, but I, I feel like 2022 is going to be the year that definitely uh, sets the tone for me. Uh, it will be my best year. 2021, though, I'm just going to close it out, you know, just like I closed it out in 2020. I'm going to close it out again in 2021. And this time we're just going to really, um, you know, the Loma fight, I made my mark. You know, I think I hit the mark, if I, if I, if anything. I hit the mark. But with this fight right here against Cambosas, even though a lot of people don't expect this fight to whether go to the distance or feel like it's a, that much of a competitive fight, uh, people are still going to tune in because they still want to see what am I going to be, what, am I, what do I bring, what, what is it? And it's uh, really just that. Now, I know you said you thought it was going to be a quick fight. Is there, um, I don't know, I don't, maybe do you want to get a few rounds in just to, because it's been a while, or how are you going to prevent yourself? Because I know you're so excited to get back in there to not be so over exuberant that, you know, that you're not going to be as patient and poised as you usually are in the fight. Any worries about that? Or are you just going to go in there and blast away and try to get him out of there in the first round? Um. Uh, you know, just tune in, you know. Uh, I'll Bobby tune in, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, just tune in. I think, honestly, though, it's just, uh, yeah, you know, um, I could switch the momentum when I need to, you know, and, and that's the that's the greatest uh, key factor in my uh, in my arsenal, in my sport, and what I do in my style. I'm able to uh, uh, connect on every scale level when it comes to whether if I'm going to go in there aggressive, if I'm going to back off, you know, those are the things that we work on in the gym. So, yeah, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to, for a war. I'm definitely looking for a big war in the first round and see what this guy could do. And, and I don't think it'll go past the first. I'll be honest with you, Dan. I don't, I don't think this fight would definitely go past the first. It won't. All right, then we, I've been, yeah, uh, I've been stopping my sparring partners from, from the head to the body to everything. And these are 16 ounces and I'm not even going full throttle. So it's like, you know, I've been in the gym and I've been busting my ass. This guy, I don't like him on top of that. Plus it's a real fight. It's not sparring, and it's 
eight ounce gloves. I mean, this guy's gonna. It's probably. I'm praying for it to be worse than the Mason Menard fight. I really am. <laughs> I'm praying for it to be <laughs> worse than the Mason Menard fight. Well, that was a rough one. So uh, we'll see what. And happens it was at the Hulu theater, so I'm looking. And for it was. All right, Tia Well, thank you very much, my man. Thank you, guys. Is that it, Anthony? I was going to say we've still got we've still got five minutes with Tio on this interview. If you guys have any more, yeah, I got a I got a quick one for uh, Tio Fimo. I'm just wondering, you know, if you if you move up to one, you you feel like you will move up to 140 for your next fight. That way you're you're leaning now. Yeah, it depends. I think uh, I don't see why not. You know, if I if I stay at this weight one more time, it's just so I could um, stay active a little bit more before Josh Taylor. You know, because I know he still has a fight, Adam uh, Catterall, uh, in February, right? So uh, just something like that, you know, just staying productive, staying active. If anything, I might just drop all these belts, man, and let these guys fight for them. You know, nobody wants to fight me because I hold all the belts, <laughs> you know? So it's like, you know, why not? Like, I probably just, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, um, let's see what happens uh, weigh-in day. Usually my biggest fight, man, is always the scale. I never missed on the scale, ever. But that's my biggest fight. I don't even focus on on Saturday night. You know, right now, my main goal, I got four days, five days, if we count today, I'm just making this weight. So, yep, that's my main my main focus. And just one follow-up to you for me. Um, he, you just feel, do you feel just like guys like Gervonta Davis, Ryan, uh, Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, they just won't fight you and you just kind of have to move forward? Yeah, they won't, you know, and I think that it's just ridiculous. Like, look, like what Dan said, like, I, it's it's insane, you know. I mean, we wanted the Lomachenko fight back in 2020, and it got postponed a few times before we finally made it happen, especially during COVID. Um, but for two fights that I'm going to have within the, the cusp of 24 months, I mean, that's that's depressing. You know, I would understand if I'm making Mayweather money, right? But it's not. <laughs> it's, it's not that right now, you know, so it's like, I just got to keep working, got to keep building. And, and the only way I keep building is by the amount of fights that I keep keep having. So by me having all these belts, it's amazing. But it's like, what good is it if no one wants to fight and, and take them from me? People rather take the money than fight for the actual things that give us the money, which is the belts. So it's like, um, I'm just sitting here in my throne just waiting for someone to come up or whatever and it's like i'm not getting that so i might as well look forward to something else i gotta move on thanks for your time man good luck making wait thank you guys hey to you um one more for me i'm curious your take on the uh the porter stoppage from this past weekend um mm -hmm. there's been a lot of questions about whether that was too early or not and and some people said that um, you know, part of the reason was it was his dad who did it and he had a different relationship than maybe other trainers i'm curious your take on you know, if you've ever had that discussion with your dad and if, you know, what would happen, you know, if you ever got in a situation like that? Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, it was shocking for me to see that. But I mean, as a father, I guess that's when he steps in. You know, I, I, we all know that Crawford, once he gets you down, I mean, he's going to go out there and try to finish you, you know, and he's one of the top, if not one of the best ones to do it. You know, once he hurts you, he finishes. So I think that his father already knew. I don't think he... You know, from my my state of what I saw, you know, I think he should have let Portis show something. But, yeah, you know, it was a only his father knows. You know, they didn't talk about it, though. So that's the only thing. Me and my father, we've talked about these things. If that ever occurs and stuff, and he knows when I need to. You know, he knows best. You know, I'll trust him on that. If that ever comes about where he feels like um, I'm just not doing what I need to do, like I guess what Portis, what, what Kenny said, but um, just more so of, like, the protection. You got to protect your fighter. You got to protect your son. You got to, it's just those things. So I think uh, the only thing I could say that negatively that I did not like from that standpoint was just the uh, um, hard criticism that his father gave him, you know, on there, on the mic. That's the only thing I disliked about, about the situation. Other than that, you know, I think it was a good call, to be honest. I think it was a good call because um, Porter was going to, whether the next stoppage or anything, it wasn't going to be over. You can see it. Thanks. Yeah. All right, guys. I look forward to um. I just like like I said again. Uh, thank you guys for for everything, man. I appreciate each and every one of you guys, and thank you for always uh, supporting us and you know pushing the movement. It's been a long time, and I'm just thankful to finally be here, um, back on again. You know, it's fight week. I can't even believe it. So, 
for everybody, I thank you guys. And I look forward to having you all see my fight and see how much I've improved. You know, I've been talking a lot and I know it has been, it's been, you know, a lot of people have been talking about that, but I just want to defend myself on that end. And the only way I get to do it, November 27th, Saturday night. And um, uh, thank you guys again, man. I hope you guys enjoy your families this weekend, you know, and your loved ones and happy Thanksgiving to everybody and happy holidays and the takeover We're back on. Thank you guys. Great. Thanks everyone. Um, Tia Fimo has one more to do. So if you guys can all jump off when you get a second, um, I'll see some of you this weekend and, and others soon.